community. Get on board, get on track, get to where you're going. And now, your Edutrainer, National Insurance Columnist, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Steve Savant and I'm your Edutrainer or coach for the entry level life insurance series that we're doing. Last week we did the introduction to life insurance. This whole week we're doing the basics of life insurance, try to introduce you to that. And of course we're brought to you by our sponsor Lincoln Benefit Life, an all-state company. And one of the reasons why we're using Lincoln Benefit Life is their software is so user-friendly. We voted it. Of all the carriers that we play with, we voted them as the easiest to deal with and it's great educational tool. If you're coming into our business, no matter if it's property casualty, medical, securities, wherever you're coming in, maybe you're an annuity salesman, you're coming to the right place because we're gonna show you software and you can download this software, make it easy so that when we start using their software in the next coming weeks, you'll be able to go for us page by page through the proposal system. It's www.lblsalesplural.com forward slash ETW. So that's www.lblsales.com forward slash ETW. And go ahead and download it and it'll walk you through it. And then when we get into it, you'll be able to walk through the software step by step as we do it. Well, today we're going through our mortality. We talked a little bit about this last week. We were, we were speaking in regards to um, what we were talking about, the 2001 CSOs. And here what I've done is I've kind of brought, made a, a kind of a larger page here. Let me see if I can expand it. And I've taken the 2001 Commissioner Standard Operational Mortality Table. Now, most people use the phrase the CSO, the CSO tables. So it's interesting to note. Look, at they break it down by male and female and the per thousand who are going to die per thousand in America. And they do that all the way out to 120, which is pretty much the standard boilerplate for most endowing and or maturity dates of contracts. So when I look at this number, and remember also, just a little side note, you can, this is inside our life manual. So when you order it, you want to order the whole manual, all the things we're talking about. Anytime we show you statistics or paperwork like this, it's already documented, it's in the manual. All you have to do is write us at thebiz at brokersalliance.com and say, I want the life insurance manual, and it comes with a nice vocabulary. So it's really good, an introduction, and you should order it, thebiz at brokersalliance.com, and we'll send it to you. And this is included in it as well. So I'm looking at these numbers, and really, it's really quite outstanding. I mean, think about this. 60-year-old male, out of the 1,000 people, there's 9.86% are expected to die at age 60, and that's a male. The female rates drop at 8.01. When we do income scenarios, we use boilerplates like age 45. Here's a male 45, so for every 1,000, 2.65 people will actually die out of that per 1,000 rate. So when I think about it, you really don't get into bigger numbers until you really get out into the geriatric community. And remember, when you think about how far out we are now on illustrations, where permanent contracts go all the way out to age 120, and some carriers have actually said that they're actually in their contract, it says life of the insured. They're not even putting a number on it. But here you see in the 2001, CSO, and remember the new update, if you're really having a problem with insomnia, go out to the Society of Actuaries um, website. And out there they have the new 2008, it's been out for a couple years, but most people don't know about it. And they have the new 2008 valuation based tables, the VBT, which actually kind of, not that it supersedes the 2001, it doesn't, but you'll see kind of where we're going. And it's pretty amazing when you think long, human longevity, human, uh, uh, when you're looking at LEs, uh, life expectancy. So here's just kind of a nice roadmap to kind of see when can I, ex what is the percentage of people? Now, interesting to, enough to know that they really, those numbers get pretty high up and they have changed because now the people that are turning 100, as I said before last week, we're seeing the largest growth in geriatric science in the demographic of centurions, people living 100 years of age. So it's really amazing when you think about it because you wanna be able to come to a place where you say, wow, how can I do this? And I wanna show you another uh, 
Let me see if I can get this here. Oh, here it is. I want to get to the second one, which is the chance of dying before 65. So when you look at this, chance, the, uh, let me see if I can make it a little bigger. Well, I guess not. Okay. We're going to live with it. Here's the chance of dying before 65. So let's say you're a young person at 25 years of age or 30 years of age. The number still alive at 65 will be 850 out of that thousand. Those are pretty good odds. When you move up to male 45 and you're looking at those numbers, now you're talking about 870. There's just a little drop, but not a lot. When you get into your higher zones at 55, 904 are still going to, because you're now getting closer to that time at 865. So what this map does, it grids us out, male and female, per thousand, what are the chances are per thousand that you're going to be able to get to age 65. Now some of us in the room in the audience today are age 60, and right now there's a, the chance of not being alive is 5%. So I think that's a pretty good deal for the people in the room that are 60 years old. Here's another road map that actually maps out human mortality, and that's the chance of dying before 65. Here's another one. Oops, I went too far. Let's go to... Deaths per thousand, there we go, okay. Here's the male and female and the ages, and these are the numbers expected to die each year based on your age according to the 2001 Commissioner Standard Operational Tables. Again, these are all in the life manual with our vocabulary. You can order it at the biz at brokersalliance.com and you can just say, I need the whole manual, this will be in that manual. And when I'm looking at it, you can start to see the males per thousand, the rates start to go up. I mean, look at this. This is 18.47, 18 of the thousand males are expected to die that year if you're age 65 male. Although I noticed that female rates are at 11.85. That spread is huge when you think about planning and when you're transferring different estates. The women are probably, if they're the same age as their husband, they're probably going to outlive their husband between seven and nine years. The average first marriage is about three years, so they're going to be widows for about ten years. The average second marriage, I've noticed, is a little wider than that. You're starting to actually marry younger, younger women in, with males, and that number starts to spread between 12 and 13 years where you'll actually be by yourself. So when I plot these lines, I'm looking at not only the male and the, fem and the female rate, but I'm trying to figure out how can I do my planning. And just a little side note, one of the reasons why I look at all three of these charts is because when we're actually scoring out how long we're going to be doing retirement planning, whether we're going to be doing estate planning, whether we're going to be doing business succession planning, I have to figure out what the longevity is in the family. And I usually, even if I wouldn't be selling life insurance, I would be using a part two in the life insurance to get kind of a medical profile, figure out where it lands on some of these pages, and then mark my planning accordingly in using the 2001 CSO. Again, some people have already graduated and started using the Society of Actuaries 2008 VBT tables. It's really not official, but it does point to kind of where we're going. Another thing that's in the actual um, manual is the vocabulary. And in this vocabulary, you'll notice I have a couple pages in here. Here's the dividend accumulation. It has, it's done by alphabet. And I'm trying to see if I can get to the next page here. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, on this first page, again, you can see I have several words, like here's one, accumulated value. The accumulation value, what they do is they talk about all the premiums that you've accumulated and the earnings on that, and then that's before any of the deductions for expenses, loans, or surrenders. Attained age, that's the age of the insured on a given date. Some companies allow the same age. When they write it, whatever your age is, that's the age you, the application is taken on. Some allow for you to actually do nearest age. So if your clients, whatever the nearest age they are, if they're within the striking range of becoming older, the companies use that as their attained age. 
Some carriers allow what's called backdating to save age. So if you have a carrier that's actually using actual age, and maybe your birthday was just a couple months ago, they may very well allow you to go back and get your earlier age, and that actually saves money. So that's just one of these. Again, I'm just going through a few of them as an example. Beneficiary. These are the individuals or entities that are designed or designated to receive the proceeds of the life insurance upon their death. Notice that a couple lines down, it gives the definition of actual contingent beneficiaries. If my first beneficiary, as I said last week, if my first beneficiaries aren't alive or they, there's something's already, I've already changed them, my contingent beneficiaries come online and those are individuals or legal entities designed to receive the proceeds of a life insurance policy if the primary beneficiary is deceased at the time the benefits are made payable. Again, these are just some of the things I'm pointing out to you. The death benefit amount. The amount stated in the policy contract as payable upon death of the person whose life is being insured. Now, when we get into this there later on this week, we're going to actually figure out and do some calculations. How much insurance do I need? And so that death benefit amount. Notice here's another one, dependent coverage. I could put my wife on as dependent coverage. I could put my children on on some of this. I could actually use certain riders, and we're going to spend a whole couple days, maybe it might even take a week, to do every rider that we can talk about. We're going to slow down, explain every single rider, and you could get dependent coverage that comes like a rider. It can be term coverage. Some allow some permanent forms of insurance. So there's a lot of issues here. I'm just giving you a couple of what's on here. Here are some other ones here. Dividend options. Maybe you're buying a participating whole life contract. We're going to be getting to that in the future. You'll be able to say, what's the dividend option and how can I use my dividends? There's a plethora of areas and ways you can use your dividends. We'll talk about that. Here's a, again another thing that I really like to know is free look. How long? And remember, how long do I have to look at a policy? I've delivered the policy to the client. How long does the client have before they can say, I'm buying the, the policy or no, I've had a 20-day free look or a 30-day free look and I've decided to turn it back in. No harm, no foul, they get all their money back. And so free look, depending upon each state, tell you, is it a 10-day free look, a 20-day free look, or a 30-day free look? And some of them, depending upon the client, I think they have new ones out that might even be longer than that. So these are just ideas. Here's another one, grace period. Well, generally, life insurance, let's say your contract is due at the end of this month and you haven't paid it. You still have a grace period of about 30 days. Again, every, most of the states have adopted the 30-day 30, 30 platform, but again, you need to look at each carrier and the state that you're in. Again, this is a life insurance glossary of terms. It talks about the grace period. We've talked about the free look period. And then you can get into all kinds of things like, oh, extended term insurance. It's a provision found in policies that'll give you the option to continue existing insurance as term insurance. If you have enough cash, you can just say, how long can I convert that into term and how long will that work? Again, I'm just going through basic concepts in our whole, I mean, this is a huge list, a glossary of terms that you can tap into so that you can say, oh, Here's the definition of the set. Here's maturity date. When does the contract mature? Well, I, as I suggested earlier, some of them actually mature quite early. I mean, they're, they're like in the old days, age 95. Now you don't see any contracts like that. Almost everybody's out 120. Some carriers are illustrating a 131. And then we have carriers that are using that phrase again, life of the client. So this vocabulary is really great because it'll help position you and prepare you as we go through the course. So order it at the biz at brokersalliance.com. We'll send the entire manual with all these vocabularies so that you can track with us. And remember to download the software from Lincoln Benefit Life at www.lblsales.com forward slash ETW. This has been an edutrainment workshop the educational division of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance, and sponsored by Lincoln Benefit Life, an Allstate company.